says he is. And I know my father and I know his nature is that he's faithful. When he says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. Can I tell you, lots of things you can look at right now are distracting you from what God is doing. Do not be distracted by natural things. You might say, well, this happened and that happened. I don't care what happened in the natural. Do you know who's working in the natural is the devil and his crew. But God is working on your behalf. And he is doing things and accomplishing things and working things. If you'll have faith to continue and be steadfast, he'll raise you up out of the deathbed too. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, we glorify and magnify you this morning. Yes. Oh, you said if your name be lifted up, you will draw all men unto you. Yes. So we lift up your name this morning. We yes. lift up the name of Jesus. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, that you are working on our behalf. Yes. That you're doing things on our behalf. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, to bring glory to the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, it's so good to bring glory to the name of Jesus. You need to give him glory all the time. You need to just be, you, you, know, you know, you can drive in your car and give glory to God. Come on. You can drive in your car and give glory to God. You can walk. You can go for a walk. You can go for a swim. And all things you do, you can give glory to God. It doesn't matter what it looks like or sounds like or feels like. You give glory to God. It'll, you, come on. If you'll start giving glory to God, it will change the way things look. Amen. Why? Whatever you're magnifying is what you're going to get. There you go. Come on. Whatever you magnify, everybody's had a magnifying glass. You remember when you were a little kid and you had a magnifying glass and you went out and you magnified the ants? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, those poor little ants. But there's so many of them. Come on. There can be too many. But you can't. Listen. But what you're doing, you're magnifying. Light. Come on. The magnifying glass under the sun's light is magnifying the light, the radiance, the heat, the glory of the sun. Whatever you magnify with your mouth. Come on. Am I touching on some... Whatever you magnify with your heart, whatever you magnify with your thoughts, those are going to become bigger. Come on. It's important what you magnify. So we've got to magnify the Word of God. Amen. Come on, you can, you can give this morning. It's time for tithes and offerings. You can give now. You can give later. I don't care when you give. Just give. God knows you're planning to give. Don't keep it in the barn forever. Hallelujah. Seed belongs in the field where it can reproduce, not in the shed. Come on. Seed belongs in the barn. No, it belongs in the field. Take it out of the barn, put it in the field. 
We've got our offering basket over there. We've got our kiosk back there. You can give online at myrichchurch.org forward slash giving. You know, we had a big conversation, several of them, about which one is the forward slash and backward slash. Yes. The forward slash is leaning forward in the sentence. That's why it's called the forward slash. Come on. Praise the Lord. You know, you can have the longest, most interesting conversations about the most menial things in the world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. I thank you that the Ridge Church and our friends and partners and members are giving people. And as they give, it is given to them, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Will men give unto you in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Why do I say men will give to you? Because God doesn't have U.S. currency in heaven. If he did it, it would be counterfeit. Come on. God's not a counterfeiter. How does God get anything to you? He gets it through someone else and it gets to you. Come on. That's how seed time and harvest work. You give and it's given. Right? You give your time at your job and you're given a paycheck. You do really good at your job. Come on. You do really good at your job. And you're going to be given an increase. Right? It's called a bonus. It's called a raise. You're going to benefit. You're going to increase. You cannot outgive God. You just simply cannot. God, God owns the cows on a thousand hills and all the, all the taters under them hills. I, you know, I like some of those old colloquial southern sayings like that. Praise God, but it's true. It's true. It's true. And the diamonds, come on. He, he owns all the diamonds and the coal and the rubies and the gold. Come on, he paves streets with gold. One man said, I'm going to take my gold with me to heaven. He gets to heaven, he's got his gold with him. St. Peter meets him at the, at the pearly gate. He said, what you doing? He said, well, I brought all my gold with me. He says, what'd you bring paving equipment, paving supplies for? He says, you know, we paved the streets here with gold. Come on. What's valuable to you here isn't necessarily valuable there. What's valuable to God is our willingness and obedience to serve him. Yes. And to do what he says to do. Yes. Amen. Let's pray this morning before we start with, come on, that's been a good word already. Yes. You, can take, you, can, you can take that one to the bank and, and cash it in. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Father, for every person who's giving in person and online. Father, we thank you. We sow that seed that you have, you have brought into this storehouse. And we spread it for the kingdom's value, for the kingdom. And we thank you, Father, that you are causing us to increase yes. and to do better and to be better and to be better next year than we were this year. Thank you, Father. We're not dependent on world systems. We're dependent on the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. You are our source, Amen. and we love you, yes. and we thank you, Father, here in this church. We receive the tithes, yes. but there we know you receive them. Yes. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for prospering us yes. and blessing us and increasing us in every way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, if you out there, if you'll just believe that too. Come on. All you've got to do is believe it and receive it and act like it's true. Believe it, receive it, act like it. That's how you got saved, isn't it? Yes. I mean, how, how, how many of you actually, when you got saved, had a big cry out experience and it was just, it was, you were, a, you were a, an, an ugly mess at the end. And how many of you just, you just, it just seems like you made a decision. You just made a change of heart and started walking with Jesus. Yep. Well, both of those things are valid. That's right. But just because you, just because, I, I, I heard the story uh, I was listening to Brother Hagen. I listened to Brother Hagen a lot. And he was telling this story about this man. He said, he said, you know, I was just I was just new in pastor churches and I thought I was spiritual. And he says, he says, this man comes forward and he gets prayed for, and and you know, he's just all balls and tears and crying and everything. He says, Wow, that man really got saved, it really stuck. He says, the next day I saw him walk into a dark dive on the other end of town. Never did see him back in church again. One man comes forward, just says a simple little prayer, turns around, walks out, becomes the most faithful member of the church. That's like the parable that Jesus told. 
He said there, were, there, there was a man who went to his two brothers, his two sons, and the two, he asked the two sons to do something, and one said, one said, sure, I'll do it. The other one said, no, I'm not going to do it. The one that said, sure, I'll do it, never did anything, and the one said, no, just went ahead and did it anyway. Which of them two is better? Come on, the one who did it. You know it's better? To say yes and mean it and do it. I was talking with Kathy about that this week. It's better to say yes, mean it, and do it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Come on. I'm happy. I'm excited today. Oh, we're going to talk about salvation. Like, salvation? How long can you talk about salvation? Oh, well, we can talk about salvation a whole long time. Why? Because salvation is more, listen, salvation, receiving the gift of, gift of salvation from your sins, from sin, is just the door opening to the things that God has for you. The gospel can be summed up in one word, salvation. Someone said, okay, well, I guess that's it. We're done for today. No, salvation means that you are forgiven from your sins, but what else does it mean? How does that even work? Let's look at a couple, uh, one of the most famous passages in the Bible, John 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus said, and this is how John the, the Apostle recorded it, the one whom Jesus loved. How does he know that? Because he knew he was loved by Jesus. Are you loved by Jesus? Yes. Come on, I'm loved by Jesus. I may not be loved by every person I ever met, but I'm loved by Jesus. Amen. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Come on. That's the entryway. You've got eternal life now. Verse 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Do you know how frustrating it is, it is when you understand that God didn't send Jesus to condemn the world when Christians go around condemning people for their behaviors? Jesus didn't do that. No, he didn't. He, you, know who he, you know who he got after? The Pharisees, the religious leaders. The ones, who, the ones who put their own, their own favorites, their own, their own um, what is it Jesus said? He said, your um, traditions make the word of God of no effect. Do you know what a tradition is? When you have a tragedy like a storm or something, and they call it an act of God. As if God stirred up that storm to cause you to lose your home. God doesn't do that. Come on, if God's doing that and the devil's doing that, we've got no hope. But Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. What does that word saved mean? The Greek word used here in the New Testament is the word that is translated as, as sozo, or soterio, or sotheo. There's many different variations on it, depending on the usage in the sentence. You know how we have, like, grammar. You know, there's there, there, and there, and which there do you put there? You know what I'm saying? T-H-E-R-E, T-H-E-I-R, T-H-Y, apostrophe R-E. And how do you know which one to do? Well, th this is grammatical, okay? In every single case, the word sozo, soterio, sotheo, literally means, in the Greek, pay attention to this, write this down, to save, to heal, to deliver, and to make whole. When you got saved, when you were born again, I was thinking about this yesterday. When I came back to the Lord, because I went for a drive yesterday. If, if you know, I, I like to go for drives, and, and I, I download teachings on my phone, and I listen, and sometimes the Lord will say, okay, I want you to turn it off, I want to talk to you. Can I get a tissue? And so I'll, I'll turn it off, and I'll just start listening to what the Lord is saying to me. Like everybody's up looking around trying to find a box of tissue. I just need a tissue. Thank you. Y'all are so kind. Y'all are so kind. And I, I remember when I came back to the Lord in 1999. 
1996. 1999 is when I got married. Yes. So that, that's an important date too. You know, I came back to the Lord in March, March 29th, 1996. I went to a church meeting. I was sick as a dog. Listen, I didn't know back then that salvation meant that you were healed also. We stopped, it was a CBS or a Rite Aid or someplace like that, and packed up on, on uh, cold medications and, and took some of that stuff and just felt even worse. You know, sometimes the cure, the physical cure for some things is worse than what, than, come on, than what you've got. I, we, we, we went and there was a certain vaccination that the doctor was asking if Faith wanted, and I knew we weren't going to give it to her. It's that HPV. And I said, well, you go, you go ahead and you tell us the, the, uh, the side effects that can, that can be brought on by it. And he said death and faith looked like she was in a, in a you know, where have he brought me? Why for hath thou done this unto me? I said, no, thank you. will not be taking that vaccine. You know, there's a simple cure for HPV. It's a sexual. <laughs> yes! Be celibate. But I got I went up and I got prayed for at that church. And when I walked outside, I didn't have any symptom of a cold. I didn't have any of the side effects of those cold medications that I had taken before we got to the church. I was completely healed. I mean I, I was just I was I was saved and I was I was completely healed. I didn't even have an expectation for that. But do you know that the word salvation literally means to be made whole? This is why uh, 3 John chapter 2, John writes, he said, Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. What is soul prosperity? I mean, people don't like the word prosperity. The prosperity, 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 prosper, 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 prosperity. God desires you to prosper. First, he wants you to prosper in your spirit. That's salvation. That's, that's being made right with God. Being made whole in your soul. That means getting the world out of your mind and thoughts and will and intellect and emotions and getting God into it. Come on, how are you going to get God into your, your thoughts, mind, will, intellect, and emotions? Through the word. You're not going to get it from TV. Come on. Sozo, salvation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. When the gospel is preached in its entirety, the gospel happens. Did you know that? When people, listen, some of you were here when, when the Durants were here and got healed from some things. God touched you. Come on. You were healed. Do you know that that's not exceptional? That is expectational with the gospel. Amen. We've had people heal from tremendous things here. A woman who could barely walk healed. God is looking to heal people through the gospel. The gospel, come on, the gospel heals people. The gospel of Jesus Christ will heal you. Yes. It, it heals you first and foremost in your soul, in your spirit. You are made whole, a new person on the inside. You are born again unto God. Amen. Isn't it nice to be born again unto God? Yes. The gospel can change your mind, the way you think about things. The gospel. When the, when the gospel is preached as salvation only from sin, then we leave out a huge portion of what salvation means. Again, salvation, the Greek word soterio, it, it, it's used in a couple different ways. It's used as salvation saved to be made whole. It's the same word used in multiple applications throughout the New Testament. When we leave out 
the, the part that God wants to heal you, he wants to deliver you, he wants to set you free, he wants to make you whole, then we leave out some of the, some of the, some of the greatest aspects of being saved. Do you know, there's so many Christians who go around with an expectation of it's winter time. It's time to get the winter cold. It's summer. We're going to get the summer cold. Oh, you know, the summer cold is worse than the winter cold. Come on, no. Don't have an expectation for those things. The world gives you an expectation for those things. If we'll turn off our TVs, we'll stop having so many of the world's expectations. Come on, if you'll turn off your TV, you'll start having less of the world's expectations. The world, listen, the world doesn't know that they're, they're brainwashing you. They're just getting you prepared. It's vaccine, set, uh, vaccine season. Lately, it's always vaccine season, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, I'm not against vaccines. Listen, I, I remember being at school and get, you, you get that big polio combination vaccine shot that looks like a quarter that's forever indented on your shoulder. Come on. Listen, there's some stuff that's good for you. But listen, the best thing you can do for yourself is get the word of God in you to get the real word of God in you that's going to heal you, save you, deliver you, set you free, make you whole. Amen. That's God's plan for you. Yeah. You know, I get, get frustrated at people who make fun of, you know, ministers who say God wants you to have your best life. Well, why wouldn't he? Come on, he's your heavenly father. Jesus said, if you being wicked, speaking to his disciples, if you being wicked know how to give good gifts, how much more does your heavenly father, Amen. who's in heaven, yes. want to give you good gifts? Yes. Does he want you to sleep well at night? Yes, yes he yes. does. Does he want you to wake up with anxiety? No, he doesn't. That's why he continually tells us, fear not, take no thought, be anxious for nothing. God doesn't want us to have all those anxieties and fears and frustrations so much so that we can't even sleep. Who wants you to be awake at night, worrying, frustrated, waking up in a cold sweat, wondering how you're going to make it to the next paycheck? Well, the devil does. God doesn't want that for you. Well, my kids are having a hard time sleeping. I, we, we, we get them and we pray for them. We hold them, we hug them, we comfort them. What does God want to do? He wants to hold you, hug you, comfort you, help you fall back to sleep, reassure you that everything's going to be okay. That's right. Why? Because he loves you. That's right. God loves you. Luke 8, 48. Luke 8, 48. I think we'll have that up on the screen eventually. <laughs> Luke 8, 48. We're going to look at some examples. You know, I love my phone, but there's just something better about the Bible. Luke 8:48. And I'm like you, I don't have it all pressed together. There's a woman with an issue of blood who'd been sick for many years and been to many doctors and, and was, was not any better as a result. I, I've heard so many stories lately about people who go to doctors and they're just not made any better. The doctors can't figure out what's wrong with them. And, you know, the, uh, Verna was telling me about a, a, a relative who was sick for months and they, they ran all these tests and couldn't find out what was wrong with him until just a few days before he died and he had leukemia. Listen, you can go to the doctors and we should go to the doctors. Faith was born, she weighed 13 ounces. Come on, I'm not bringing home a 13-ounce baby. Right. The doctor said, well, you can't deny where she's at. I didn't say we denied where she's at. We just denied that she's going to have the problems that you say she's going to have. Amen. Amen. So this woman, she'd been to many doctors and was, was by no means any better. And it says, it says um, over here in verse 43 of Luke 8, Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her, her flow of blood stopped. 
And Jesus said, who touched me? And so, you know, they're at like a rock concert. Okay, I mean, they're just surrounded by throngs of people. And he says to his disciples, who touched me? And they said, they said, what do you mean who touched you? There's a multitude of people here. Anybody could have touched you. It's like being at Disneyland on the, on the, the uh, waiting to get on Peter Pan. Or, or, or small, small world. I mean, there's be people everywhere around you. Somebody's going to touch you. Get used to it. But Jesus said, no, somebody touched me, for I perceived power coming out of me, or from me. Now when the woman saw that she, had, she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared to him in the presence of all the people that she was the one who had touched him. And he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith made you well. Go in peace. Do you know what the made you well is in the Greek? Give you a guess. It's soterio, sozo, sotheo. It's the Greek word for self, for, for saved, to be healed, to be made whole, to be delivered. She was delivered of her plague. She was made whole from her disease. She was saved from the sickness. Salvation of the spirit. Re, 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 being born again had not been introduced yet. Yet here's Jesus using the word for salvation that would apply to the salvation or the saving of the soul, the saving of the spirit, being made whole. Jesus is using that here. Luke 17, 19. See, we're going to look at some scriptures because it's important that you see it too. Now it happened, for starting in verse 11, in, in chapter 17, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the, the, the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then, as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, who stood afar off. Because if you were a leper, you had to stand a far way off. And we're not talking like the six foot to keep you safe. You know, you've got to stand off a lot further than that. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that they went, that as they went, hear me, hear me, that as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were cleansed. But one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice and glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. See, he wasn't a Jewish man. He was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said to him, said, were, not, were there not ten of you that were cleansed? But where are the nine? Where are the other nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. It has saved you. Your faith has saved you. What does Paul tell us in, in Ephesians chapter 2? That we are saved by faith through grace. And that not of our own, but it is the gift of God. Amen. Romans, Paul tells us in Romans, he says that each person is given a measure of faith really means the measure of faith. It doesn't mean that somebody gets more faith than someone else. Well, pastors and preachers and, and, and evangelists, they get more faith than anybody else. That's why it all works better for them. You no, know, it works better for some people like that. You know why? Because they're spending more time in the Word. Amen. The more time we spend in the Word, the more time, we're, the more we're going to experience the pleasure and the, and, the, and the prosperity and the glory that comes from God. You look at, at famous preachers like Billy Graham and Joel Osteen and, and, and some of them. Man, I'm telling you what they're preaching around the world. They're, they're, they're taking water to the thirsty. They're taking food to the hungry. They're taking medical attention and medical advice and medical help to people that otherwise wouldn't need it. And we want to make fun of them for having money. I just, it just, it, it baffles. Who wants you to be poor? What is the purpose of being poor? Listen, let's get to the root cause of this. If, if God wanted you to be poor, how is he going to expect for the kingdom to expand? 
You, 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 you don't have enough gas to get to Safeway. How are you going to get down the hill to minister to someone? Now, I'm not talking about just lining your own pockets. We're talking about expanding the kingdom for the purpose of the gospel. Right? What does it take? It takes money. It takes money to take a caravan of people to a third world country to, to bring them all of the equipment that they need to drill for, for, for fresh water. Right? It takes money. We've already established God doesn't have money in heaven. He doesn't have a U.S. Uh, printing press up there, printing $100 bills to send down an angel's wings, floating down on feathers. All the things people believe. It's so much better to just believe the Bible. Jesus said, if you'll give, it'll be given to you, pressed down, shaken together, men will give unto you, right? His faith made him sozo. Come on, you need to write this down and, and, and look it up for yourself, if, if you have any doubt. Sozo, that's used continually throughout the New Testament, the Gospels, the, 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 and the Epistles. The word for salvation, sozo, soteria, it's all a variation of the same word. And the root word always means to save, heal, deliver, and to make whole, to complete, completely. God wants you whole. Does it glorify God when we're barely making it up? No. Does it glorify God when you're sick? No. Well, but you know, Jesus, Jesus said, you know, that that man wasn't sick because of his father or his mother, but it was for the glory of God. No, he was sick, and if by the glory of God, he's going to be healed, and it's going to give the man, it's going to give God glory. You being sick doesn't glorify God. That's like, a, that's like if I poisoned my kids with, with toxic things to make them sick and then, and then pray for them to be healed and then stop giving them the toxins. And then they get better. What kind of parent does that make me? Literally, they'd be putting me in jail. You poisoned your children. Yeah, but I was doing it to teach them a lesson. Come on. Acts 18. I mean, sorry, Luke 18. We're going to be over near verse 40, or verse 42. Start in verse 35. Luke 18, verse 35. Then it happened as he was coming near Jericho, and a certain blind man sat down on the road begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. So, he, so, they, so they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before him warned him that he should be quiet. Come on. You ought to be quiet. It's church. You don't want to get loud. It's church. Listen, it's only recorded in heaven that there's 30, 30 minutes of quiet the entire time. The rest of the time, the angels are flying around the throne of God, shouting out, glory, glory, hallelujah. Come on. Give yourself a shout of glory. Give out a glory shout. Hallelujah. Then those who went out before him told him to be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. What happened? His faith was drawing the attention of Jesus. And when he came near, he asked, saying, What do you want, for me? What do you want me to do for you? He, the, the blind man said to the Lord that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has made you saved, whole, delivered. Well, but your daughter has eyesight problems. Yeah. But we're believing and we're speaking. And we're going to get the same result that by our faith. She was made whole. Amen. Come on. By your faith. Listen. Your faith is what Jesus said to every one of these individuals. Your faith. Your belief. Your belief. See, every single one of these people. This blind man called Jesus the son of David. 
understanding that that meant that he was the Messiah, that he understood that Jesus was the Messiah. Where do you think he got that idea? Because he heard. The woman with the issue of blood, it said, when she had heard about Jesus, she came up in the press behind him and touched him from behind. When she had heard, what did she hear? She heard that if you could, if you could touch Jesus, if you could, if you could get near Jesus, you're going to get healed. If you can get your faith to Jesus, you're going to get saved. You're going to get saved, delivered, healed. You're going to be made whole from your affliction. Listen, Jesus never said you're going to live a life of 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 ease and flower beds and. and no, he said, in this world you're going to have tribulation, but do not fear, for I have overcome this world. What is he telling you? Yeah, there's going to be hard times in this life, but don't worry about it. Have no fear for it, because I have overcome, hallelujah, for I have overcome the world. Yes, you raise your hand, hallelujah. We're hand-raising people. What does that mean? When trials come, when, when temptations come, when, when problems arise, when, when sickness tries to knock at your door, when the devil tries to steal your, your home or your family or your finances, Jesus said, don't worry, I'll overcome him. Amen. Yes. You put your faith and your trust in me, and I will, your, faith in, your faith in me will save you. Amen. Your, faith, your faith in him will save you. Your faith in him saved you from hell. Come on. If, his, if your faith in him saved you from hell, how much more will it save you from all the attacks of the enemy? How much more will it save you from the problems that arise in this world? Acts 4.12. You know, I had a completely different message this morning that I put together last night. And I was in the shower this morning, and the Lord said, now I want you to do this. I want you to get all these scriptures about salvation. And I said, okay. And I went to my office this morning, and because there's no air conditioning on, in my office, it was hot. And someone said, well, why are you wearing a jacket? Well, because I've got air conditioning out here. I can't just wear a t-shirt to church. I suppose I could. I've done it. And it was too hot. So I went into Verna's office. And I said, because it was cooler in there. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm gathering all these scriptures and, and, and putting everything down. Listen. Jesus, and I, I, I battle on this back and forth. But this is the scripture. Ephesians chapter 4 Paul writes that, that Jesus ascended on high and sent gifts. The apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and teacher. Now some would say that the pastor and the teacher are the same gift. We were talking about it the other day. Because we've had a lot of, we've had a lot of interesting experiences in prayer and with prayer people. And some people think that the, the prayer person is a ministry gift. It's not. Prayer, the prayer lady, I, I love when Dana, I think Dana said this. She said, prayer ladies aren't a ministry gift. Our friend Dana Schrader. The prayer lady isn't a ministry gift. The pastor, boss, the pastor, apostle, prophet, evangelist, and teacher are ministry gifts. So when we come to church, I expect as a ministry gift, as, as Faith was saying, the pastor, the, the pastor is the microphone of God. Come on. Now listen, not every pastor is called to be a pastor. Some of them do it just because it's a good occupation, they think, in a, in a, in a denominational church with you know, all the liturgy and you know, the fancy robes and stuff like that. But you know me, I'm not into fancy robes. Acts 4.12. Hallelujah. Nor is, there, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven among men by which we must be saved. Now the word saved there is the same word we've been talking about, being made whole. No other name is given on earth among men by which salvation 
be made whole comes from except the name of Jesus. Amen. Salvation doesn't exist outside Jesus. Here, let me say that again for the people in the back. Salvation doesn't exist outside the name of Jesus. Amen. Being made whole, can we put it that way, doesn't exist outside the name of Jesus. Being healed of your disease doesn't exist outside the name of Jesus. Being delivered doesn't exist outside the name of Jesus. There is no other name given under heaven by which men must be saved, healed, delivered, made whole, set free. Outside the name of Jesus. <coughs> it's not coming from the government. It's not coming from a sugar daddy. It's not coming from your physician. It's not coming from your attorney. It's coming only through the name of Jesus. Jesus. That is my final answer. Come on. There is no other name. Let's look over at Acts 16. So Paul and Silas are in prison. They've been preaching. Imagine that. A preacher being in jail. Oh, my goodness. What will happen to the church? The pastor got put in jail for preaching. Come on. Lots of pastors over the last year were put in jail for preaching. They still are in Canada. It's just getting worse up there. I mean, they burned down one pastor's house. They burned down churches. For what? For preaching Jesus. Well, but you don't understand COVID. 99.8% survival rate. Yeah. I'm not making fun. I know people who died from it. That's right. I know people who had a hard time recovering from it. Yep. Listen, I mean, even my father-in-law had a hard time recovering from it. My very good friends, Scott and Teresa, had a very hard time. They had it. But I know other people that had it, and it's just like a cold. I'm not making light, but they're in, they're in prison for preaching the gospel. No, right? I love that. She's like, no, don't put them in prison. <laughs> they're in prison for preaching the gospel. I don't know, but I just love children. We're not having any more, but I just love children. <laughs> Paul and Silas are in prison. And, 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 and you can read this, and it, it says, it says, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. <coughs> singing and praying and singing hymns to God in prison. Come on, in prison, I'd be like, sitting over, oh, Jesus, I don't know. What no! <laughs> Lord, I was just preaching to God, but I don't know what happened. They said, don't ever do it. I guess I won't do it anymore. No! They were singing and praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened. And everyone's chains were loosed. They were saved. They were delivered. They were set free. Come on. And so... It says in the, in, the, in the keeper of the prison awakening from his sleep. So that means that this was an earthquake that was even woke up the, the prison keeper, right? Yeah. And seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, because that's what they would do, right? I mean, if somebody opened the prison doors at one of the big state federal penitentiaries, opened all the doors and turned off the alarms, what are the prisoners going to do? They're out. They're out. Come on. But Paul called out, he was, this guy was going to go kill himself. Because it's better for him to kill himself and be done with it quickly than to face the Roman legions of, of, of soldiers. They're going to flog him and persecute him and drag him openly and publicly and kill him slowly. <coughs> and the keeper of the prison, now waking, okay, verse 28. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, do yourself no harm for we are all here. Then he called for a light. 
ran in and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Listen, this prison guard keeper, he was, he was aware of what was happening in his town. He knows that Paul and Silas were taken before the court officials and that they were flogged and put in prison and what they were put in prison for. And he has now seen the God that they preach open the prison doors and set the captives free. And he falls down and says, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be sozo? How do I obtain this soteria? How do I obtain what, what you're taught, what you're preaching? Listen, if Jesus is going around and he's just simply preaching, and I don't mean to make light of salvation from sin, I'm not. But if he's only preaching about salvation from sin, why is there such an expectation on people to be made whole? Why is there an expectation on the people that are listening to him teach to be healed? Why is it when he goes to his own hometown and he could perform no mighty works, did he say it was because of their unbelief? They didn't believe. Because they looked at him naturally and says, no, this is just Jesus, the son of John, Joseph. Don't, aren't, his, aren't his mother and, and, and sisters and brothers, aren't they all here? We know him. So there'll be people that knew you before Christ. They will say of you in Christ, no, I know you. I know what kind of person you are. I know what kind of things you do. No, you knew what kind of person I was. You knew what kind of things I did. You don't know me now. Amen. You don't know me in Christ. Yeah. But if you'll hang around long enough, you're going to find out what I'm like in Christ. Amen. You're going to find out that I'm blessed and highly favored of the Lord. Yes. Come on, you're going to find out that wherever I go, whatever I touch, prospers. Why? Because God said, whatever you put your hand to, you're going to prosper. Amen. Come on, God wants you to prosper. 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. That is the heart of God for you. To be saved, to be made whole in every area. To be delivered from all, from all the troubles and tribulations. Listen, we went through a COVID situation. Listen, people left the church, stopped coming for so many reasons over the last year and a half. But can I tell you, we're still here. Amen. You're still here, and you're still growing, and you have a better expectation. You went into this knowing in your heart that God was going to see you through, but not knowing how he was going to see you through. You came into this not knowing what it was going to be like on the other side. We got the word. I got the word. I heard my pastor say, because listen, everybody needs a pastor. I heard my pastor say, he said, we're coming through this better on the other side than we went into it. Amen. Come on, we're coming out of this better on the other side. I'm going into 2021 one way, but I'm coming out into 2022 better than I went into 2021. Amen. Come on, if you don't believe that, what's your purpose? You can believe that your job will get better. You can believe that your finances will get better. But if you believe that God's going to help you, yes. come on. If you believe that God's going to help you to do better, Amen. if you believe that God wants to prosper you, Amen. if you believe that God wants to heal you, Amen. if you, come on, I remember, I, I've used this before, God told us we are going to have a son, name him Josiah, and so we, we, and we, we just all the time, we'd say, well, God told us we're having a son, we're going to name him Josiah, hallelujah, and then I'd turn around and I'd say, well, it just takes us a long time to get pregnant, and it's hard for us to get pregnant, but we're going to have that son, name him Josiah. And the Lord said to me, come on, I don't mean in an audible voice, like he called me on the phone. Here's the problem. If you call me on the phone, I'm probably going to let it go in voicemail. <laughs> and if you leave a voicemail and tell me that you need to talk to me about something important, I will call you back. Jesus knows that about me. No. He said, I sat down. He said, come over here, sit down, I want to talk to you. Come on, if you ever, ever had Jesus tell you that he wants you to come over and sit down so he can talk to you, then you, you're busy doing all the talking and not doing any listening. He said, he said, your words have been stout against me. What does that mean? It means they've been hard. Abrasive. 
I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, you keep, you keep saying what I told you. You're going to have a son named Josiah. But then you also keep saying it's hard for us to get pregnant. It takes us a long time to get pregnant. I can't work with that. You're saying two different things. James said, let that man who does that understand he'll receive nothing from the Lord. That's right. If you keep saying, I'm the heel of the Lord, I'm the heel of the Lord, I sure hope I don't get a cold this winter. You just canceled yourself out. It's like putting the car in drive and holding your foot on the brake. Where are you going? Nowhere, but it's going to sound exciting on the rear wheels. You can tell Brandon I said that. <laughs> Right? Okay. Uh, verse 31, so they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. What does that mean? Anyone who believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and confesses with their mouth is going to be saved. You, your household, your friends, anybody. Everybody. Everybody who believes on the Lord Jesus to be saved, to be made whole, to be made delivered, to be made, to be healed, to be saved from sin. That's what you're going to get. Right. Believe it and say it. Amen. Come on. Get your words to line up with what you believe in your heart. You know that God wants you healed. Yeah, right. Nobody really believes that God wants to make them sick. Right. I don't think they do. I, I, it would be hard to believe that after this morning. Romans 10. It's all right. You've got time. Romans 10, verse 8. Ah, let's go back to verse 6. Verse 6. But the righteousness of faith speaks this way. Now you know that Paul wrote by the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 5, he said that he who knew no sin became sin, that you might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when you're made right with God, you're, you're given the righteousness of God in Christ. Okay? But the righteousness of faith speaks this way. Do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what, does, but what does it say? See, you know, all of this is questioning who's going to do what. That's all that is. What he just said there is just questioning. Well, how's God going to do it? How's he going to make it happen? How's he going to cause that to do? How's he going to do this? How's he going to do that? Stop asking those questions. The righteousness of faith doesn't ask that. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be sozo. Saved, healed, delivered, made whole. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto soteria. Saved, healed, delivered, made whole. For the scriptures say, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. What does the word of God tell us about receiving salvation? That the righteous person believes and says the word of God. The word of God is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart, that if you will confess with your heart, Jesus is Lord, you shall be saved, healed, delivered, made whole made righteous. The word in your mouth, listen, if you will put, our, our greatest examples of this, you'll see this, are Jesus and Paul and John and Peter. If you'll take the words of God, put them in your mouth, and don't, don't contradict it with your own words, you will get God's results. God's words in your mouth are no less effective than they are in his mouth. Because he said his word never fails. Come on. Your words are going to fail. 
you're going to change what you say. You're going to change your feelings. Depending on what's happening, your feelings are going to change over people. Your feelings are... Listen, you know, teenagers don't need lots of boyfriends. They don't need lots of girlfriends. Well, I just love this person. Well, I don't love them today. Come on. Feelings are fickle. Times change. The one thing that never changes is the Word of God. His Word never changes. You'll say, but, but it doesn't work for... No, it does. It will work for every person in every situation. If it doesn't, then no one can ever really truly be saved. That's right. You can never... Listen, if it doesn't work like this all the time, for people who put it into practice, then how will everybody, anybody, ever, anywhere, know that they are saved? And that they're going to be with God forever? You can't. You cannot separate the fullness of salvation out from God's plan. If we try to separate the fullness of salvation out from the gospel, out from salvation, and say, well, God did away with that. No, because I can tell you a big secret. Salvation is received by faith. Faith never fails. Faith will never pass away. Otherwise, salvation itself would pass away. Amen? Amen. 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 Bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we just come right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you for your word this morning. Father, we thank you that you are working in us and through us. We believe this morning that we receive the word of God and graft it into us. We thank you, Father, that we're believing and we're receiving and we're confessing and we're holding fast our confession of faith in Jesus. And if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord, you can do so this morning. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, I confess I'm a sinner. I confess Jesus now as my Lord and Savior. And I receive the righteousness of God that comes through salvation. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me just turn this off real quick.